In today's video, we are making the most incredible butternut squash soup. It's harvest season, let's go. What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another episode of More Seasoning. I am your host Farnham, and in today's video, bring the fall vibes. I want the hay, I want the pumpkins, the turkeys, the little cobble I want it all. Listen, it is harvest season, and we are going hard with the harvest vibes this year. We got some bangers on the channel. We got great mashed potatoes, great mac and cheese, but I had to start this this harvest season off with I promise you the most incredible butternut squash soup you are ever gonna make and it's incredibly easy hey before we jump into it though please scroll down hit that like button hit that subscribe button and drop a comment below I'm always down there talking to y'all so please hit me up down there butternut squash soup b-roll time let's go So the ingredients for this soup, listen, even if you're not a big vegetable person, I promise you this soup is to die for, you have to make it. Are a butternut squash, a yellow onion, two heads of garlic, fresh ginger, some long carrots, rosemary, thyme, creme fraiche. Now you don't have to use creme fraiche. I know it might be kind of hard to find, but it should be in your deli by the cheeses. This stuff is incredible. Pumpkin seeds, cinnamon sticks or ground cinnamon, whole or ground allspice. This is ground. Optional cayenne if you want a little bit of ground nut nutmeg or whole nutmegs. I like a whole nut. Some good quality olive oil, vegetable stock, and then some heavy whipping cream. All right, I just want to preface this. We're jumping into the prep work real quick. If my mouth looks weird or I sound funny, it's because I got braces. I got a wedding coming up. I got to make sure that my teeth are perfect, my bite's perfect. I want to look good for my girl. So we got braces for the next couple months. All right, so as you'll see for the prep work, I've got a baking sheet with some parchment paper. Most of our vegetables are just gonna go on this. We're gonna roast this. This is a very easy recipe. For the time being though, I'm just gonna put this to the side and we can start on the squash. So I like to just go ahead and take this top off. Then I like to peel it so I don't have to burn my fingers on the flesh later. We're gonna slice it in half, scoop the seeds out. All right, once we got it peeled, we're going onto our parchment. Now you don't have to peel this, but listen, if you don't peel it, you don't want the skin in your soup and then you gotta go and you gotta scoop it out with the spoon. It's a pain in the ass. Just go ahead and peel it. And then all we have to do is just chop this little butt off later and throw the whole thing in the blender. All right, next we got an onion. This is easy. We don't have to find chop or anything. So anybody out there who doesn't have good knife skills, this is a recipe for you. All we're gonna do is chop the bottom off, chop the top off, cut it down the middle, pull that skin away, put it into quarters onto our baking sheet. Now I prefer 24 carrots but we got two today. Anyway, these carrots are gonna add a sweetness to the soup. All we're gonna do is just take the tip off and then we'll just do a couple cuts down the carrot just to break them up a little bit and then these can just go right on our parchment paper. And listen, we gotta get roasty toasty with some roasted garlic. You know that's adding those deep fall flavors. So all we do is we take our knife and then we go right across the top just like this. All right, so as we can see, most of the cloves are exposed, but there's quite a few in there that are not, and they're not gonna get that roasty toastiness. So I just kinda like to go in and expose what is not exposed. So I'm gonna go in, trim around on both of these. All right, next we're gonna get a close-up shot of this for you, check it out. So we're just gonna add a little bit of salt to the tops of these garlic cloves, and then we're gonna go ahead and lock it in deep with some olive oil, and from there, very easy. All we do is fold. Fold, 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 and then we wrap it up nice and tight. And then if you look back here, I got the rest of my veggies, pop it on there. All right, next we got rosemary. Now we don't have to do too much to rosemary and you have to remember rosemary is some potent I usually just take the rosemary, I'll put it over in the corner. We do not need a lot of that because it will bleed through, but we do need a little more than that. About a three quarters of a stick, and next we got some thyme. Now, we don't want the stems of the thyme, we want the thyme leaves, and what I usually do is so it kind of like blends into the squash itself, is I'll just peel these little leaves off. If you get soft ends of the stem, like this is like very thick, like you don't want that, it's very fibrous, but like these little soft ends right here, those are okay. All right, now we got some olive oil, and all we're gonna do is we need to just coat all these veggies with some olive oil. So make sure you get that rosemary nice and coated. We're gonna hit those onions, get that butternut squash. Oh, it looks like we're low key running out of olive oil. 
All right, so once we got the olive oil down, now we're just gonna massage the oil into everything because we don't want anything to burn. So we're just gonna rub our carrots in the olive oil, rub them around, plenty on the parchment paper. Good, that's all nice and coated. We got our onions. Go ahead and just rub those onions down with the olive oil. Now we got the squash. We could just move it around the squash like this. Got a bunch inside. Cool, and you could even rub the sides down if you want a little bit. Take some of that off, rub the sides. All right, so we got all our veggies oiled up, lubed up. We got all our herbs and aromatics on here. And all we have to do, dogs are going crazy. I'm sorry, they love butternut squash soup and they know what time it is. Anyway, 425 oven, we're putting it in for 45 minutes or until the butternut squash is fork tender, let's go. All right, so I mean, at this point, the only other thing we really have to prep out is some ginger. So. While we're waiting for everything in the oven, we can prep the ginger out. All I'm gonna do is take like a knob about this size and then we're gonna scrape all the skin off. Then we're gonna do a fine chop into about a teaspoon and a half of fine chopped ginger. All right, once we got our ginger chopped up, we're gonna slide over to the stove and we got some things we need to toast. Let's go. All right, so two things that I wanna toast. We're gonna go ahead and top our soup with some nice toasted pumpkin seeds, right? So the way that we toast pumpkin seeds is we just put them into a dry, that's a lot, whatever. Multiple people are eating. We got our pumpkin seeds in a small pan and no, I'm not gonna touch that because I did burn my fingerprints off a week and a half ago. Actually, check this out, I'll show you the pan. There's my fingerprints still in the damn pan. So if you got a touch ID on an iPhone or you find my iPhone and you find that pan, you got access to my whole life. So the when you're toasting spices and seeds though, check this out real quick, you wanna keep them moving when that pan starts to get hot or else they will scorch and burn. So we just keep things moving, throw them back in. And the other thing that I wanna toast is check this out right here. We got some cinnamon sticks. Now I like to finish the soup with some fresh nutmeg on the micro plane right on top and some cinnamon. But if we toast the cinnamon stick, it really brings out that flavor, that aroma, that true fall flavor. So after we're done toasting these pumpkin seeds, we're gonna toast the cinnamon stick. So for the next minute or two, I'm just gonna keep these seeds moving until they get nice and brown. All right, so look how nice and toasted those are. And we can even show you in comparison to what they just looked like a few minutes ago. They went from green to a nice toasty brown and they smell incredible. It literally smells like fall and harvest in here. All right, so we got our seeds toasted. Now we got a cinnamon stick. Same business. Cinnamon stick's gonna go in. We're gonna keep that on a medium heat. Keep it moving till it gets nice and aromatic. It'll darken up and it will smell beautiful. All right, so I can smell cinnamon. It started toasting up a little bit. As you can see, the bark kind of expanded. So we go into a bowl. Now listen, how many of y'all knew that this was bark from a tree? Like literally cinnamon is bark from a cinnamon tree. Did y'all know that? Like this is literally, they just peel the bark off the tree. It's pretty wild. Okay, so we still got 15 minutes left. Everything is done. We cleaned up at this point. We just gotta wait for this and then we can uh, cook the rest of this. All right, so our veggies are all done. We're gonna pull these guys out. Oh, and it just sm it smells like fall in the house right now because of this. Now this is gonna be super duper. I said duper, so you know it's for real. Hot. So we're gonna pop this down. And then we're gonna let that cool down just a little bit because we have to throw this in the blender and we don't wanna put super hot food into a plastic blender. We can get into the whole like pulls, leeches, plastic, all that. We don't gotta worry about it. So we're gonna give this like four or five minutes and make sure while you're waiting, you go ahead and take a fork, grab two of them, and then we're gonna open up this garlic because this stuff is not gonna cool down if you aren't able to open up this aluminum foil. That beautiful roasted garlic, oh my gosh. It smells incredible. This is gonna be fire. Hold tight, we'll be right back. All right, so butternut squash soup. You could get whatever consistency you please. And the way we will achieve that is with some vegetable broth. So if you like a real thick butternut squash soup, start with a little and work your way up. If you like it real thin, start with a little, work your way up. We still have to add some heavy cream later on. So I suggest when we do this, we keep it fairly thick. All right, so that's probably about eight ounces of vegetable broth. And now this gets real easy. Look, we just take our onions, put our onions in there, leave all that roasty, toasty, Maillard reaction goodness in there. That's flavor. We take our carrots, that's gonna add our sweetness. I'm gonna take this rosemary, I'm gonna strip it, get all them leaves off, and then I'm gonna grab a little paring knife. I'm just gonna come here, and remember, we peeled, so at this point, all we kinda have to do is just get that last little bit of skin off the bottom Bottom, just like that and then we can just cut this guy into little cubes or squares like so and then we can just toss those in there all right so we got our roasted garlic and all we have to do is just literally squeeze those cloves in and they're just gonna shoot right out and that is just gonna be straight flavor and then all that garlic infused oil is gonna go in there as well as the little cloves that we pulled out separately all right so check this out we got smoothie ice cream soup 
soup. Yes, we have a soup setting. So listen, it's probably gonna clog up. We're probably gonna have to add more vegetable stock, but that's okay. We'll just do a little bit at a time. So here we go. Soup in three, two, one. Yep, there she goes, she's stuck, she's stuck. So we just gotta add ourselves a little bit more vegetable broth. Give it a little shake, we're back at it, here we go. All right, now we're going for that consistency check. Ready? So we got to blend it. We let it go for about a minute. And look at that. That is what we're looking for right there. Now it is a little on the thick side, but like I said, remember, we still got to add some olive oil. We got to add heavy whipping cream to this when we throw it in the pot, but you can give it a taste if you want. It's gonna be real roasted garlic heavy right now. It's definitely gonna have that harvesty vibe, but I promise you the magic, this is 1% of what it's gonna taste like when we're done. And all we need is a couple minutes. So I'm gonna clean this area up and we're gonna get it popping. All right, we got a stock pot right here. Medium heat. We're going in with about two tablespoons of olive oil. And then we're gonna go in with our fresh ginger we're just gonna start that cooking process with this ginger, okay? The ginger is gonna add some nice freshness, a little bit of brightness to the soup because the soup is very savory. It's got a lot of um, seasonal vibes to it, the allspice, the nutmeg, that's all very potent. So we do need something to brighten it up and that's gonna be this ginger. So as you can see, we got our ginger in there and it's starting to sizzle and bubble right now as things are heating up and we're gonna let this go and saute for about two minutes. All right, so that ginger's starting to toast up and now we're gonna go in with some cinnamon and the purpose for the cinnamon going in here is again we're toasting it so we're just gonna let this go and keep it moving around for a couple minutes that way we don't burn all right so just give that like 30 seconds take it off the burner the reason why we take it off the burner look is now that we're starting to cool down when we add our soup we're not gonna get this huge reaction and it's not gonna splatter oil everywhere we're letting that oil cool down just a little bit because now it's time to put it in ready so here we go and then it is gonna give a big reaction just dump as much in as you can all right here we go three two, one. It's all good. And then just keep it moving. And we're gonna get the rest of that butternut squash soup out of there. All right, so we're on a low heat right now. And now we're gonna go ahead and whisk this. Okay, we got it back on the heat. We're gonna go ahead and whisk all that ginger and cinnamon in from around the edges and incorporate it into our soup. Keep this on a nice low heat. See, we still got some things popping over here on the edges. You can see we're keeping it warm. Now check it out. This is where things get interesting. All right, we're gonna add all of our fall flavors at this point. So again, we're gonna go in with a little bit more cinnamon. Boom, it's about half a teaspoon. Then we've got some cayenne pepper. Now this is just gonna add a little kick to it. Should we turn that heat down? Just a little kick of cayenne, a little bit of heat. I've got some ground allspice. So we're gonna go in with some allspice. And you could just do a little bit at a time and taste as you go till you get it where you want it. Oh man, this guy's popping all over the place. Let me get this a little mix real quick. Go in with some pepper, do about 30 cranks. I low key forgot to salt all my vegetables before I put them in the stove. So we're gonna need extra salt on this. Here we go. I'm doing honestly a couple tablespoons right now of salt. And now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna whisk this all in. I can't forget some fresh ground nutmeg. Now this is the epitome of harvest flavor right here. This fresh nutmeg is just going to take it all the way. So I'm going to do about half a nut. We're going to go ahead and mix that in. And now, as you can see, we're still pretty thick. We're almost, we're at a puree at this point. So now we need to go in with our heavy whipping cream. And I'm just going to go ahead and stir this in as we go. So I get it to the consistency that I want. All right. So that was about a pint or so. Honestly, we could go a little thinner. So I'm going to add a little bit more of that whipping cream. Go ahead and mix that in. That's a, yeah, that's, a, that's, that's good. So at this point we do a taste test. Now we're going to have to adjust this a few times to get it exactly how we want it. So, oh, so good. A little more cinnamon, a little more allspice, a little more nutmeg, some more salt, and a whisk. Okay, so I think we hit our mark. I literally added more of everything, including a lot of salt, okay? You taste as you go with this. Again, I forgot to salt my vegetables when I put them in the oven, so I had to put more salt than usual, but Yo, it feels like Thanksgiving in my, in my entire body right now. Okay, so this is great right here. Don't get me wrong, it tastes amazing. You can eat it just like this, but what I'm about to show you in the B-roll, the way we finish this off with some olive oil, some creme fraiche, our herbs, our seasonings, it's gonna take it to the next level. I promise you, B-roll time, let's go.
Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for the taste test and I literally cannot wait to dunk my spoon in here. Before I do it though, if you don't follow me on TikTok, I went viral last weekend. We got over 16 million views on one video, millions of views on all the videos after that. Make sure y'all get me on TikTok. I'm putting exclusive recipes and just real life stuff on there. But it's time for the taste test. You hear the spooky music now. Here we go. Harvest butternut squash soup. Oh, this looks incredible. In three, two, one. I've outdone myself again. This is in crayon. That, oh, the little bit of ginger in there. Wow, that, that's incredible. The best butternut squash soup I've ever had, and I've had a lot in my days. Panera, good night. Soup shop, good night. Everybody, good night. This is where it's at. Incredibly easy, and it tastes fire. And it's like super low in calories, low key. But hey, thank you for watching. My name is Farnham. This is more seasoning. This is a five out of five on the star scale. Butternut squash soup, make it for Thanksgiving. This is what I'm bringing this year. I love y'all. We out. Bow. Mm. Oh my God. Make sure y'all like and subscribe. Mm. This is just too damn good. And I have my braces so my teeth hurt. Mm. Oh my God. More seasoning.